Oh, 
Will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we uh, uh, just acknowledge before you that we, uh, we live in a, a country, a land that is blessed beyond any other place on earth. God, we enjoy things and, and uh, that most people in the rest of the world know nothing about nor can even dream about. Uh, Lord, we, that, that's the land that we live in. And God, we acknowledge it's because you have blessed us and made it so. Thank you for raising up men and women over the years who were willing to you know, lay down their lives to defend our nation and to go and defend the other nations as well. Uh, where we are, we are blessed beyond uh, all people, that is for sure, we, in all lands because of that. And uh, we remember, we remember their families. Maybe it's been many years ago since they got the knock at the door or maybe it was a letter they received, but nonetheless, there's an empty place at the table. There's a void in the family. God, we, we pray for them right now. We pray for your... Uh, your amazing grace, your comfort and care. Lord, we pray for you to, to lift them up and encourage them and to, to care for them even today, even though it may be many years uh, uh, you know, since that, that loss has been experienced. We pray for those who have experienced even recent loss. God, thank you for, for blessing our country with people like this willing to make that kind of sacrifice. And again, we pray for their family. Father, we, we also just thank you for sending your Holy Spirit. We remember that today on this Pentecost Sunday. God, where would we, we be as followers of Jesus Christ if we had didn't have his very presence through his Spirit living in us? If we didn't have his, his power, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, even living in us, the power of the Holy Spirit. God, thank you that you saved us and you made it possible for us to, to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. We're grateful for your Holy Spirit as well. We do want to uh, pray for some, some folks in our community, uh, in our congregation that are experiencing some needs. We think especially of the family of Pastor Mary Cyrus, pastor of Russellville United Methodist Church. Uh, we think about her family and her congregation at the death of Mary this, this week. God, would you care for them and hold them up and, and encourage them, help them, the Lord, to look to you and to remember the, the blessing of eternal life for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for Alicia Ironton who will be having cancer surgery June the, the 6th and, and uh, Janet Slater will be having surgery on June the 8th. Uh, and then also for Glory and Meter will be having surgery on June the 9th. We pray for them and their surgeries. We also pray for Julianne Holbrook, our pianist, who is uh, ailing with severe back pain. We pray for all of them that they would know uh, the touch of your hand, your healing power, uh, and you know, just mending their, their bodies and blessing them. Father, we also want to pray for the, the women and the team of uh, the upcoming women, Women's Emmaus Walk at the Limestone, Ohio Valley Emmaus Community. We pray for them as they uh, start out on that 72-hour uh, adventure seeking after you this coming Thursday. Lord, will you uh, bless and encourage and change lives and draw many closer to Jesus Christ. And now, Father, we pray for our scripture reading this morning. And God, we truly believe, just as, just as uh, some of our youth have, have confessed this morning that, uh, you know, the scriptures in the Old and New Testament, they're your word. They're your word to us. God, open our hearts and minds to receive, open our hearts to believe and obey. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> the uh, purpose driven life continues to be my preaching theme. And, and last Sunday, I preached on, you know, part of the purpose-driven life that God has for us has to do with worship and, uh, and the fact that, that we are planned for God's pleasure. 
And, and so our, our worship to him is what he, he desires. Another part of, of worship today is, uh, or another part of worship is friendship with God and worshiping him, uh, you know, for the opportunity to have that kind of relationship with God through Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. Our mission statement as a Mount Nebo Global Methodist Church is printed in your bulletin every week. And so I want to ask you to open up your bulletin. Look at the left-hand page at the very top. In that black box is the, is the wording of our mission statement. And I'm going to ask you to read it with me, if you would. Here's our mission. To make disciples of Jesus Christ who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. All right, thank you. So it, it recognizes in our mission statement that, that, that uh, part of God's plan for us is to worship Him. And it's stated this way, to worship Him passionately. In other words, worship Him with all of our hearts, with everything, that put everything into it. In other words, worshiping God. So, uh, so that's uh, you know, part of the, the plan that God has for us is worship. And, uh, and, and the way that that can be experienced is through friendship with Jesus Christ. I want to ask you, if you would, and you're able to please stand, and I'm going to read from John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17, and I'll ask you to follow along on the screen. John 15, verses 9 to 17. Jesus is speaking here, and he says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> we, we grow in our ability to worship God when we grow in friendship with Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, he made the way for us to become friends with God. Jesus Christ made the way for us to become friends of God. In fact, Romans chapter 5, verse 11 states it this way. Now we can rejoice. Can I have that scripture on the screen, please? Romans chapter 5, verse 11. Thank you. Uh, so now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. So he's made, Jesus has made a way for us to become friends of God. And God wants us to enjoy friendship with Him through Jesus Christ. Think about that for a minute. Just, I mean, you've heard a lot of words just coming at you. Stop right now. Listen to these. God wants us to enjoy friendship with Him through Jesus Christ. Unthinkable. Unthinkable. It absolutely is unthinkable. It's hard to imagine how sinful people like us can have a friendship with God. Because we know about our sin. We, we understand a portion of it. Our sin is worse than we realize. Honestly, it is. It's worse than we realize. Because we've sinned against God. We've offended God. That's what sin is. We have rebelled against God. Can you imagine that? The very one who has created us, lovingly created us for a relationship with Him. The very one who has done that. We have, you know, just pushed away from Him. Insulted Him. More or less slap him in the face with our sin and say, I don't care what you think or do. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's how bad sin is and it's worse. It's worse than we can imagine. Considering how bad our sin is and then consider how wonderful God is. Perfect. 
sinless, holy, righteous, great, mighty, absolute love, creator, judge, righteous judge, on and on and on. That is who God is. And so it's unthinkable that he would want us or that we could have a friendship with him. I mean, after all, we have made it necessary. We made it necessary for God to send his son to the cross to die for our sins in order to offer us salvation from his, from his wrath against our sin. We made it necessary to do that. God, God sent Jesus to save us from things like pride. We're, we're in our own hearts, you know, before we come to know Jesus Christ, some, some of us said in our hearts, you know what, God, I don't need you. I've heard about salvation. I've heard about this Jesus, but I don't need you, God. I'm, I'm fine on my own. I'm good as I, as I am. I'm as good as the next person to me, and I'm better than most. That's pride. There's a problem with that because we're comparing ourselves with one another instead of comparing ourselves with God. And we're not so good when we compare ourselves with God. And so God sent Jesus to save us from pride. He sent Jesus to save us from rebellion too, where we want, as I mentioned earlier, we want our way over God's way. We say, I don't care what you say, God. I, I want to do what I want to do. That's rebellion. And, and God even sent Jesus to save us from our lack of faith in God. Maybe when we get all of that, you know, we, we understand how, how sinful we are, how prideful we are, how rebellious we've been against God. And maybe once we start to comprehend all of that, then there's, for some, a lack of faith in God, thinking, I'm not good enough for God to save me. That's, that's wrong thinking. That's, because here, here's what it is. We're thinking that, you know, if I do enough good, I can reach up and somehow get a hold of God. Somehow I can bring myself into a relationship with Him. It's not about, salvation is not about, you know, being good enough. We can never be good enough. Salvation is about God reaching down to us because He loves us and has mercy on us. And He says, I welcome you into a relationship with me. Will you repent of your sin and believe in my Son, the Lord Jesus Christ? And I'll bring you into a relationship with me. That takes faith to do that, doesn't it? And sometimes, we, you know, people get to the point of recognizing their sin, being willing to admit that sin and rebellion, and then coming to the point of a lack of faith. And that keeps us from, from God as well. But Jesus, uh, God sent Jesus to save us from all of that. And he offers every person, even though none of us deserve it, he's offered every person this friendship with God. Unthinkable. Absolutely unthinkable, isn't it? That God would do that. There was a, there was a man who, who died, in, <clears throat> excuse me, a man who died of what authorities determined was an accidental gunshot. He, uh, he didn't leave a will, and so his wife hired an attorney to settle her husband's affairs and, and, and hoping to get a statement about her, her husband's wishes, the attorney said to the wife, you know, I need to know the last words that he said to you. And she said, I really, I really don't want to tell you. I don't want to tell you. And the attorney, you know, restated what he said. He said, look, you know, you know, your husband didn't leave a will. I have to know the last words that he ever said to you. And again, his wife said, I don't want to tell you. It was something between the two of us. And the attorney is just, you know, more frustrated, more desperate than ever. He says, look, you know, listen, I beg you one more time. Please tell me the last thing he ever said to you. And she says, well, the last thing he ever said was, was this. You don't scare me. You couldn't hit me with a broadside of the barn with that, with that gun. You couldn't hit a broadside of the barn with that old gun. That was a joke. <laughs> that was the last thing. He said to her, here's the point. Let me get to the point. This is more meaningful than any of that. She was guilty of, this is, you know, it's bad. It didn't go over good. When, it, when you have to explain the joke and tell people to laugh, it's, it's not going well. First service did better. I told it better. You know, anyway, here's the point. She was guilty of killing her husband, but she didn't want to admit it. 
We are all guilty of killing Jesus. It was our sin that made his death on the cross necessary. Scripture tells us over and over and over again that all of us have sinned. We're all in the same, same boat. But the good news is God has sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to save everybody who will repent and to believe in him. He chose to go to the cross for us anyway, even though we have sinned against him against God. I mean, that's the love of God right there in Jesus Christ. So we, we have every reason to worship Him by welcoming. One way, one way we can do that is by welcoming the friendship that He offers us. We're all guilty of sin before God, but God offers us His grace. God offers us something good that we do not deserve. And that's friendship. We're talking about that today. I want to share with you quickly um, six, six secrets of friendship with God. Number one, speak to God continually. Secrets of friendship with God. How can we develop that friendship with, with God after we come to know Jesus Christ? Speak to God continually. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 simply says two words Pray continually. Pray continually. We know that friends who, who see one another all the time talk to one another more than once a day. And we're encouraged to do that with God. He's with us all the time. So why not talk to Him all the time as well? And, and we, two things. We don't have to be alone to talk with God. We don't have to be alone to talk to Him. We can talk to Him in a crowd. We can talk anywhere in our minds and hearts, we can talk to God. I don't recommend you doing that out loud all the time, just talking to God out loud, even around other people. They'll think you're crazy if you're just going around talking. Think about this. I remember when those Bluetooth devices first came available, and I was I was unaware of it. I'm in Kroger, and there's this guy walking down the aisle, and he's kind of got his head down, and he's just talking and carrying on this conversation. And I'm looking around, there's, where is he? He's talking to nobody. What's going on? I didn't realize he had those Bluetooth devices in. That's what will happen if we pray out loud all the time in, uh, in groups. People will think we are crazy. But we don't, point is, we don't have to be alone to talk with God. We can do that in our minds and hearts. Secondly, we don't have to be in the church to, uh, to talk to God. We don't have to be in the church building. We can talk to God all the time in every place. We can carry on a conversation. Here's the point. We can carry on a conversation with God all day long. Isn't that cool? And I hope you're doing that. In his book, The Purpose of Driven Life, Pastor Rick Warren gives two helpful <clears throat> suggestions for how to do this. Uh, I encourage you to do this if you aren't already doing it. So one way to talk to God all day long, talk to God continually, is to pray shorter conversational kinds of prayers throughout the day. You know, uh, when God brings somebody to mind, you know, a friend, a family member, or whatever, you know, it's something as simple as, you know, God bless my spouse, or, or God, will you help my friend? Just, you know, simple, quick prayers. While you're doing other things, you can pray that kind of prayer. You can pray for children, your children, for finances, for the needs of others, for people that don't yet know Jesus Christ. You can, you can pray those kind of short conversational prayers throughout the day. He also mentions praying breath prayers. What he calls as breath, what he calls breath prayers. It's a simple prayer that can be prayed in one breath. You know, like for instance, God, I'm counting on you. I'm counting on you. Uh, God, I belong to you. Help me to know you, Lord. Or help me to trust you. Or, you know, reminders from scriptures. Uh, scripture, you will never leave me. You know, things like that. Just breath prayers you can, we can pray throughout the day. And so, whether it's short conversations or breath prayers, we can speak to God constantly. The second secret to friendship with God is think about God constantly. Think about it constantly. We can do this by thinking about God's word constantly. Uh, you know, it, it, it'd be hard uh, to be friends with God without knowing his word. 
And if we can't study the Bible all the time while we're working or, or whatever else, but we can think about God's Word all the time, can't we? That's again why reading Scripture is important. And I hope you're making time to read it daily. Morning's a great time to start out reading God's Word because as we read God's Word, then we're, you know, we're giving ourselves something you know, to think about throughout the day. We're giving, us, giving ourselves God's Word to think about through the day. We can memorize it, for instance. Israel's King David uh, grew up, uh, grew in his friendship with God by doing this sort of thing. Psalm 119, verse 97, he wrote these words, Oh, how I love your law. So I've got God's word. God, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. So thinking about scripture during the day is one way to grow in our friendship with God. Here's a third way. Be honest with God. Tell God how you're really feeling. You know, if you're struggling with, with doubt, you know, tell God that. Tell God about your doubt. Tell God about your anger or disappointment or, you know, whatever it is. Tell God what you're feeling. Psalm 142, verse 2 from the New Living Translation uh, it says, I pour out my complaints before Him and tell Him all my troubles. I mean, here's a scripture that's just where the psalmist, God led the psalmist to be honest with him, just, just telling him, you know, telling God how they, he was feeling, and we can do the same thing. Friends let each other know how they're really feeling. Here's a fourth secret uh, to friendship with God. Do what God says. Just do what he says. Jesus called his followers his friends, but he notice he did not call them his equals. He says, you know, you're my friends, but he didn't say you're my equal. I mean, he's God, and we're, we're called to follow him. So our correct response to him is to obey him out of our love for him. Jesus said in the passage that we just read, chapter 15 of John, verse 14, Jesus said, you are my friends if you do what I command. And that means do what he commands, whether we, uh, uh, you know, whether we agree or not, whether we understand it or not. Uh, do what he commands in Scripture, because a friend of God does what God commands. The fifth friendship secret is this: care about what God cares about. Care about what He cares about. Friends care about what is important to the other person. You know that, just an interpersonal relationship. Friends care about what's important to the other person. Uh, and then regarding uh, an encounter that Jesus had with Zacchaeus, the tax collector in the New Testament, Jesus said this. He said, I have come to seek and to save the lost. So right out front, Jesus said, I care about lost people. And so he wants us to care about lost people as well. People that are spiritually lost don't yet know him. He wants us to care about the same things he cares about. The last secret to friendship with God is this. One more. You ready? I'm trying to go through these quick for a reason. Hang in there. One more. Choose to get close to God. Choose to get close to God. That's key to friendship with God. You know what? We are as close to God as we choose to be. Plain and simple. There's always a million excuses. And, and, you know, ones that would say, well, these are really valid. Point is, we're as close to God as we choose to be. He's always wanted to be close to us. The question is, are we willing to be close to Him? James chapter 4, verse 8, uh, we're told through God's Word, come near to God, and He will come near to you. So we're as close to God as we choose to be. Number six, choose to get close to God. All right, so six things, six secrets to friendship with God. I end with this question. Where are you in your relationship with God? Where are you? Maybe in one of three places. Where are you in your relationship with God? Are you thinking about a relationship with God? You haven't yet uh, you know, accepted that relationship that Jesus is offering you, but you're thinking about it? Is that where you're at in your relationship with God? Or, or maybe you have already you know, repented of your sin and you've put your faith in Jesus Christ and, and you've, you've you know, 
accepted that relationship, but it's like, you know, uh, not, not too much. You know, Lord, I, I, you know, I'm fine. Uh, my ticket's punched for heaven now, and that's the way I'm thinking, but, you know, that's all the further I want to go. Is that, is that where you're at? You're, you're, you've, uh, you've accepted that relationship, you've repented, you've believed in Christ, but you're keeping him at arm's length. Maybe thirdly, you're saved from, uh, from your sin, you believe in Christ, and you're choosing to grow closer to Jesus Christ. I hope that's where you're at. One of those three. Either you're thinking about it, you've believed in him, but you're keeping it at arm's length, or you've believed in him and you're choosing to grow closer to him. Any one of those places. If you're in any one of those places in your relationship with God, there's room to get closer. Would you agree? There's room to get closer to him in any one of those, those uh, you know, positions of relationship with God. The question is, do you want to get, get closer? He, he wants us to worship him by welcoming the friendship, a growing friendship with Jesus Christ that Jesus offers. Here's what I want to ask you to do. I'll finish with this. I want to ask you to work on one of these this week. Post it. Thank you. There's all the things that I just mentioned. So I, I want to ask you to choose one of these in order to grow in your friendship with God. Choose to do one of these things. Choose to work on one of these things. Uh, just to say, I, I will grow in, in, in friendship with God this week by speaking to Him continually or thinking about Him constantly or being honest with Him or doing what He says or caring about what He cares about or by choosing to get closer to Him. I want to ask you to pick one of those and work on that this week. Work on your friendship with God, wherever you're at. Choose one of those, and here's what I want you to do. The one you choose, I want you to write it on your Connect card and leave it here. For me, it comes to me. Write it on your Connect card, which one of those you choose. And then also write it on your bulletin so you take it home with you and you remember what it is in case you would forget. Do that right now. Write it on your Connect card and write it on your bulletin. It's a commitment. You're making it. There's something about writing it out. There's something about officially saying, I will do this. That is important. Because mainly we're saying that to God. That's what, that's what He wants to hear from us. I will do this. I'm choosing to get closer to you. God, this is what I'm going to do to choose to grow my friendship with you. That's important to God. I, I, I ask to receive those so that I can be praying for you and, 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 and you know along the way. And I'll be doing the same thing myself, but I ask you to do that. Take that, that step of commitment to growing in your relationship and your friendship with God. And please do that. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord, uh, you, you know us so well and, and uh, you desire our worship. And, and one part of our worship is, is to you know, want to grow in that friendship with Jesus Christ, your Son, that you offer to us. Help us to worship you well. Help us to, to uh, you know, just grow as friends of Jesus Christ. And we pray for your help in doing so. Lord, prompt us to fulfill you know, that, that one thing that, that we believe that would, would help us to grow in that friendship. And we'll thank you for it. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, your, your only Son. Amen. Please stand.